NHS Education for Scotland and I was a member of the um, <coughs> who, who experienced um, the three-day event last November in Battlefield. And um, at the, I remember at the end of that um, event um, we were doing a, a final circle and we were to see finishing words, final words. And my wise words were from my mum and it was, does it feed your blood? And this work actually does feed my blood. Um, and I was thinking about that, and I think that's um, why it's important is because blood is the, you know, the energy that goes through our bodies and, um, and from a healthy person, that's, that's important. But one of the big policy changes that's affected health and, is um, the integration of health and care. Um, and conversations that I'm experiencing and noticing are around how can we integrate health and care. But the people are, that are having those conversations are those that are shaping the, the, you know, the, the big guns, you know, local authorities, health um, um, boards. And how do you get the voice of the people in that? And, I, and although this is all about uh, democracy and all that, I can see a role for um, the approaches and concepts in the field of health um, to engage staff differently, to engage people differently. We've got self-directed support and all these other um, good things that are coming in that just seem to flow um, towards this work. Um, Pamela talked about different um, theories and gurus and whatever. Um, what I noticed at the, the Battlefield today was you know, we didn't have all the theory and the, and the gurus mentioned, but it was there deep in, in all the work that was, was covered. Um, and I'm an OD practitioner and I do know the, sort of the theories and, and, and some of the, the writings and, and, and good words of these people. Um, but I experience people just getting their sleeves rolled up and getting on with it. And I think leadership now needs people to get their sleeves rolled up and get on with it, to have conversations that they may have. And we've lost the ability to be in a conversation with people in a, in a, in a human way. Um, because we're built in to be busy and to do the right things. Sometimes we can't do the right things because we don't see all of the picture. Um, and I do think um, we need to teach ourselves to um, really learn how to listen, um, how to suspend our own judgment a wee bit, to think maybe there's another way here, um, and then advocate for our posting. Very quickly, and really this really hugely impressed what Priscilla said, but I've heard Toka say about work at the European Commission. But the punters in Scotland, if you men mentioned European Commission, my parents, steam would come out their ears, and they would think, participatory, they, they, would, they, would, they would be totally, they couldn't understand that anything in Europe would have anything good, or European governments would have anything good. Um, what, how would you measure the change? Because I, 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 how would you measure the change over the period since 2006 in how things are better? Is, is there any way you could, you could give me, because we need hope, we, we need to believe in practices and processes like this. Could you, could you give, in some way, give an indication of measurement? You know, is, is this a sort of a, uh, a quantum leap or is it a slow process of evolution or could you just give us a wee, a wee indication that I would just love to get some kind of a sense of hope and, and, and perspective? I want to start with that a chicken isn't fatter if you know how, how heavy it is. <laughs> and I cannot really tell you because we have not done any classical survey, so I don't have any figures. Uh, it would be interesting to do interviews. I think there was a study on the social capital that was done by three people in Karlskrona at the, or at the Blankinger Institute of Management. So they found out some things, but I don't have any figures in my head. What was found and what I feel is that we are much more connected. And of course, um, we are not so stable. There are many people coming in and leaving again. However, there is a core of people who trust each other really well. And there are more and more people requesting this work to happen. 
So there is now by word of mouth and by publicity, because we have those newsletters sent out, it's like, oh, if I do a conference, maybe I want to do it differently. And there are more and more people fed up of experiencing what you explained earlier. What a waste of time of having one, what you call also death by PowerPoint, or one person talking after the other. So anyone who has remained alive and a little bit of courage will ask for help to have a conference differently. And the results are always so amazing that those who were in it never want something else again. I've got um, three short things to say. First of all, one of the things that came out of the training we did was a phrase, it's about time we get above ourselves. As Scots, we've never, in however many years, certainly my, my time living in Scotland, and I think it's about time we get above ourselves. But what does that actually mean? There's two things. I think people are frightened. I'm excited, but there's also a bit of discomfort about what's going to happen on the 19th of September. People are beginning to see that whatever the result of the vote, Scotland will never be the same. In fact, the UK will never be the same again. I hear and read in various, particularly the Better Together campaign about the status quo. I'm afraid there is no status quo. On the 19th of September, the status quo is passed. What's going to be different? So two things. One, at a national level, Scotland needs to have a Scotland-wide conversation about what is going to be the future of Scotland. And as I said, that's irrespective of whether the vote is yes or no. But in particular, if the vote is yes. Because a lot of people will have voted differently. They need to be engaged. That's turning me out, isn't it? <laughs> the final piece I heard, some of you might have heard from Radio Scotland last week, and I just heard the snippet, which is about, it was interviewing um, somebody from the Inverness Courier newspaper. And the piece was about the decline in the circulation of national newspapers. Scotsman the Herald. But what the article was saying was that there's a huge increase in the number of readers and circulation of the local papers. And they had the editor of the Inverness Courier on and said, well, what are people reading about? And he said, they're making connections. And he said, one thing in particular, and I mentioned this to Pamela, he said, the Inverness city wants to redevelop the city centre. I immediately thought of Tim Merry, who was our, uh, one of our trainers, who has been doing exactly that in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where they're redeveloping the city centre. And he said the only forum, and this is the editor, the only forum where people are contributing to that discussion is in the newspaper. And you think, well, there is a crying need for conversations to be hosted, I think, at that local community level about what do the people want that matters in Inverness? And Dingwall, and Tame, where I come from, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Pilton, wherever we need those conversations. I just, um, it was Russell, it was your question. I have come from a place where we were funded to do this, so we have to count. You can count. Just ask people when you begin. Do you feel included? Ask them in the middle. Are you feeling listened? And at, at the, what, the end, if there ever is an end. But the other thing we, we counted and it actually made a big difference is how many people were involved. We started with three. We grew to 40. We grew to 2,500. And then politicians had those numbers. And we knew we were, we were on the mark. So count, just count the number of folk that are involved and keep coming back. They're the simple questions. So you look, look where you've got, how many? Maybe you just mention two sentences about where, you, where this is happening. 
a conversation with each other. And if you need a break, just take it. But let me introduce it, and we can use this time well. And so, um, ladies, would you like to pull down that uh, sheet there, and maybe somebody over there? So, this is one format, of course. A listening visual cave that we invented for the evening. We crafted the last part of it just five minutes before we start. Now, I would like to, don't do anything yet, let me just speak to myself. So, I'd like you to um, find three other people, and particularly if you don't know them. So, you're very welcome to move around a little bit, end up in little circles of four. And you can use the whole room, some of you can come up and use this table, or you might even move that to the side. And then, um, from whatever you yourself brought into this room, of knowing, of aspiration, of frustration, of some practice, whatever has been taking you in what has happened so far, engage in this question. How might participation in its most subtle and profound and simple form. And hosting and harvesting conversations that matter help make a difference in and for Scotland at this time. Read it again. How might participation and hosting and harvesting conversations, not any, but those that matter, uh, help make a difference in and for Scotland the people and the land and everything in it at this time. So we want to evoke the collective wisdom and intelligence and questioning from uh, the hundred of us who are sitting here. You will have 20 minutes. Engage in it, just listen to each other, share what you're seeing. In 20 minutes we'll give you a little bit more of an instruction so we can harvest some of this, uh, the insights that have come up. And um, enjoy having a good conversation. Please. Find three other mates and uh, get at it. You have the questions there. <coughs>
because I was talking about painting, wasn't it? Suggestions, your wicked questions, and you will have five, seven minutes. You know, this is a really short time together, but we are trying to make the rest of it. In here, around this uh, table, there are little uh, pieces of paper. There's also pens, so please, from every table, go grab or ask for help to get some, and then. If you could harvest two, three, maximum four suggestions, insights from uh, each uh, circle, please write an insight or a suggestion on each piece of paper, because then the harvesting team who is working here and who will be making the newsletter can help somehow cluster it and begin to make sense of these many suggestions. You have seven minutes. So whatever nice you're talking about, keep it for the pub. Let's get some harvesting done.
sign when people refuse to listen to you and lead to the wall in their conversations. So now is the harvesting. It is a total stage opportunity to come out of our little groups and hear, uh, hear the collective intelligence, hear what we were all saying uh, in order to get a shared understanding uh, of what's been said in the groups. How we're going to do that, the invitation is for someone to come up to read out their statement, if you could read it out twice. So that we all get to understand it. If you hand it to one of our lovely harvesting team, they will place it on the wall. Uh, if you have a similar card or a similar point in your group, stick your hand up and uh, someone else will come and collect it. And what we'll try and do is to create a set of clusters around the main themes that we can hopefully try and pick up and reflect back to you at the end. So uh, the invitation now at this stage is for someone to come up and give us one of your cards. So if you read it out to the front and read it into the centre, uh, and then someone will take it from you. Hello everyone. Um, we feel that we need to digitise participation. Um, we need to digitise participation, it doesn't matter quite how that is, but it's going to make it more accessible to everybody and anybody. Not just people who have got time to take off work to discuss this in person. Okay, um, we need more conversations to happen at home, kind of related, and these to be shared more widely, perhaps via social media. So not just in these kind of forums, but at home too. Did anyone have anything to say? Uh, we need to give local people back the stick they deserve in deciding how the environment they live in is shaped. Um, we felt particularly that uh, planning decisions, uh, bringing authority back to local people is extremely important. Okay, did everybody get that? Yeah, a couple of similar ones? Great. Yes, uh, we had a, a fairly lively discussion about uh, uh, how this might be quite useful for um, uh, the role that politicians uh, currently have and whether there's scope for politicians moving towards more of a hosting role which may well address some of the issues that we have around participative uh, democracies. So that